Hey guys, it's Sasha. Elon Musk is going to buy Twitter despite the feeble attempts of the board to stop him from doing it. In this video, I will explain exactly why the poison pill that the Twitter board have implemented will fail. I'll show you all the numbers and explain the options available to Elon Musk and why there is absolutely nothing that the Twitter board can do to prevent him from buying the company and firing the lot of them. In fact, I use the term their company very loosely here because it recently transpired that the entire board of Twitter happens to own next to zero Twitter shares. Jack Dorsey is in the process of leaving the board and is the only one who actually owns any Twitter stock, with the entire rest of the Twitter board owning 0.12% of the Twitter shares available between them. So 10 board members on the Twitter board own an average of 0.012% each. You've got to wonder why a board of directors happens to own next to no shares in their own company and why it is that their decisions seem to not care at all about anyone who does happen to own Twitter shares. So I am going to explain exactly what the impact on Twitter shares is going to be and why this poison pill is going to fail. I don't know if you own Twitter shares or maybe you're thinking of buying some to take advantage. Well, if you do want to buy Twitter shares and you live in the UK, then the cheapest platform to do it is Lightyear, who are the sponsors of today's video. Lightyear is the only investing app available in the UK where you can buy and sell US stocks completely 100% for free. There is no commission, there are no foreign exchange fees for up to £3,000 per month, there are no sneaky monthly activity fees. It is literally the only investing platform in the UK where you can invest up to £3,000 per month in US stocks and not pay anything at all to do it. And if you do want to try it out, they will even give you a free $10 bonus just for signing up and making any deposit. To get your $10 bonus, all you have to do is use my link in the description. And here's the compulsory disclaimer, your capital is at risk. All right, so after Elon Musk went and bought up his 9.1% stake in Twitter, the Twitter board of directors went absolutely bananas. They went completely over the top trying to stop Elon Musk from buying the company for a much higher price than the current share price. We're talking about 20% up on the share price as I'm recording this video. Remember that the people sitting on that board of directors own pretty much no Twitter shares. So you really have to think why they might not care too much about their fiduciary duty of making the best decision for their shareholders in this case, and instead deciding to screw them over. And oh boy, are they going to screw over everyone who owns Twitter shares. Let me explain. Immediately after Elon Musk offered to buy Twitter, the board implemented the poison pill. This is a defensive move by the board to prevent somebody from buying out the company. And the way that Twitter have implemented it is a little bit different. They have created a new type of share class called the Series A Participating Preferred Stock. The simple version of how it works is this. Everyone who owns a Twitter share has been issued with a special right to acquire this new Series A preferred stock. This right will take effect if Elon Musk or anybody else buys more than 15% of the total number of Twitter shares. Remember that the latest disclosure for Elon Musk had him owning 9.1%. So everyone who owns Twitter shares can go and buy these new shares that have exactly the same voting and ownership rights. Well, not exactly, because this is preferred stock, which places it slightly higher up the food chain if Twitter was to go bankrupt. And also each old share is worth one one thousandth of these new shares, but the new shares also have 1000 times more voting power. So basically, if you ignore the legal mumbo jumbo, they are the same in terms of what they give to the shareholders. So if Elon Musk goes and buys over 15% of Twitter, all existing Twitter shareholders will be able to go and buy these new shares for half price, except Elon Musk. This is an old strategy that goes back to the 80s that stops someone from being able to acquire a company in a hostile takeover. And it sort of sounds good on the surface because existing shareholders have the opportunity to go and buy more shares for half the price. But the truth is, if this scenario plays out, the existing Twitter shareholders are going to get screwed big time. And here is the maths. Let's round the numbers up to make it easy and say that Twitter shares cost $50 each. Then let's say that Elon Musk goes and buys 15% of Twitter. So Elon owns 15% and everybody else owns 85%. 
the existing shareholders then get the option to buy these new shares for half the price. So if you own one Twitter share at say $50, you can go and buy another Twitter share at $25. So you will then own two Twitter shares for a grand total price of $75. And that means that each share costs you $37.50. Stay with me, this is going to get very nerdy, but it's really important because this explains how Twitter shareholders are going to get massively screwed by the Twitter board of directors. Okay, so if Elon breaks the 15% shareholding level, then there will be less than 85% of Twitter shares owned by everybody else. So if everybody else went and bought those extra Twitter shares, then the total number of shares will become 15% Elon Musk's bit plus two lots of 85%, so 185% in total of the original number of shares. So if you take the previous valuation of Twitter and you assume no change to that valuation based on the board of directors taking an insanely stupid decision, even if the share price does not drop as a result of that directly, then the dilution here is 100% divided by 185%, so the net result is 54%. So that means that every shareholder takes a 46% haircut. And I know a few other people have recently talked about this and they even got this bit wrong, but they all forgot another important calculation step. Because those extra shares that everyone is buying at half price actually earn Twitter money. That goes into Twitter's cash position on the balance sheet immediately and in theory has a direct one-to-one -one effect on the company valuation because you're buying money in the bank account that you've just put there if you like. You might argue that a giant chunk of extra cash is worth even more than the one-to-one -one value because you know, it enables the company to grow faster or reinvest that money, but let's just keep it simple for this explanation. So 85% of the shareholders go and buy shares at a 50% discount. So they have just added half of 85% of Twitter's old valuation as dollars onto the balance sheet. 42.5%. So that means that whatever your old valuation of Twitter was in terms of the total company value, the new company value is now 42.5% higher because of those extra billions of dollars of cash that just got pumped into the balance sheet. So now let's add it up. The share price was $50. Then because of the 85% of shareholders buying additional shares, the share count goes up and dilutes the share price down by 46%. So now your share price becomes $27. But then you go and add that 42.5% of extra value in the company that you just created by giving them extra cash. And now the par value for the shares becomes $38.48. And remember that each shareholder now owns two shares of Twitter, in this case, except for Elon Musk, one for $50, one for $25. So the average cost basis here is $37.50. So in this scenario where every shareholder goes and buys these additional shares, Technically, every shareholder makes a very tiny gain, up from $37.50 to $38.48. And this gain is because one shareholder, Elon Musk, didn't get to buy shares for half price. So everyone technically gains money at his expense. This is the calculation that I saw some other people on YouTube get wrong because they failed to account for the extra cash on Twitter's balance sheet. And they said that all shareholders would lose a lot of money as a result. However, the fact is not all of the 85% of other shareholders will be able to buy additional shares. Many of them will probably not want to carry the extra risk of the share price going down by more than just the share dilution because of the impact of the board taking a moronic stupid decision. But also because you will have to come up with a large amount of cash to go and buy those extra shares. However many shares you happen to already have, maybe you acquire them over a long period of time, you will have a very narrow window of opportunity in which you have to come up with half of the same amount of money in cash to buy the extra shares. And many people simply won't have the cash or the finances available or want to go and dump that much extra money into Twitter shareholding just because there is an opportunity to go and buy those extra shares. Also remember that Twitter has a very high level of institutional ownership. According to NASDAQ, it's 75%. This number has actually dropped slightly in the last few days, which is interesting in itself. But what is even more interesting 
is the fact that a lot of these institutional investors are actually passive. Look at the biggest ones in the list. Vanguard, BlackRock, State Street. It all sounds like big investing companies with mysterious rich people behind the scenes, but in truth, a giant chunk of all of this money is just from passive index funds. I just went and took a look at 31 out of the hundreds of these different passive funds out there and looked at how many Twitter shares each one of them owns. And so you can see here that VU, VTI, SPY, and a bunch of other popular funds in there, just these ones alone own over 100 million of Twitter's shares. And there were 799 million shares of Twitter as of the end of Q4 last year, with another 66 million in RSUs and options. So just those passive funds that I looked at by themselves own 13% of the entire Twitter, and the total for all passive funds is going to be a lot more. Those funds are fully invested and they don't carry around spare cash. Some of them carry pretty hefty amounts of Twitter shares and redistribute ownership based on fixed prescribed rules. And you would say that, well, of course, they're going to buy these additional shares because if they do not, their ownership of Twitter shares will drop because of dilution. But they also have to be careful to make sure they don't overbuy because they also know that not all shareholders will exercise the option to buy. Because just think about it, if Elon Musk did go and buy 15% and the Twitter board did enact this poison pill, you would probably argue that your valuation of Twitter would dip because you would place a higher risk, a significantly higher risk on very irrational behavior by the board destroying shareholder value at all costs because the board would rather screw over shareholders to protect whatever secret it is that they don't want to come out. So on the basis that we know not all of the 85% of the remaining shareholders will buy shares, you have to hedge your risks and not buy all of the available shares if you are a passive fund, because then you will be over indexed and have to immediately sell the shares. And maybe they'll be able to do it. Maybe some of them will do that in order to take the effective profit if they determine that there is a profit to be had. But here's the big problem. Let's say, for example, that 50% of all the Twitter shareholders out there other than Elon Musk take the option and go and buy Twitter shares and they find the cash to do it. 50%, by the way, is a lot. 50% of 85% is 42.5%. And 42.5% of Twitter's valuation right now is about $15 billion. So 50% of those who can buy the new shares do buy them. We now have Elon staying with this 15% of the original shares, but 42.5% of the other shareholders will also stay with their shares because they're not gonna exercise shares and the remaining 42.5% will double their shares to 85% in total. So we now have 15 plus 42.5 plus 85 equals 142.5% of the original number of shares in circulation. So 100% divided by 142.5% equals 70%. So the shareholders just got diluted by 30%, but, 42.5% of the total shareholders now have gone and paid half price on those new shares. So Twitter just earned half of 42.5% which is 21.25% in cash. So the total company valuation is now 121.25% of what it was before the dilution. So now those who did exercise their right and bought those extra shares have two shares with a cost basis of $37.50. And those shares are now worth $42.44, assuming the share price doesn't dip. So if you went and spent an extra 50% in cash on your shareholding, you have made roughly a 13% gain on the value of your shares. But if you did not, because you didn't have the cash or you didn't want to spend the cash on Twitter shares or your risk valuation of Twitter changed, then your $50 share that just lost 15% in value because the Twitter board is a bunch of idiots trying to protect their $300,000 annual salary for giving shareholders no value whatsoever over the last 10 years. But then imagine the reputational impact on Twitter share price, because if this happens, if you go and buy Twitter shares, you're putting yourself at risk of having to spend more cash to pump into the company's balance sheet if Elon Musk goes to 15% again. And if you don't spend the 50% more cash, then you will lose 15% or more of your investment. If more of the funds choose to buy those rights, then you will lose a lot more than 15% because there's gonna be more share dilution. But then remember that if 50% of all eligible shareholders went and bought those extra shares, Elon Musk's share of Twitter would drop from 15% to 10.5%. So he would need to go and buy another 4.5% to get him back to 15% total. 
total. So 4.5% of Twitter is somewhere around the 1.6 billion, maybe it'd be a bit higher depending on how the valuation fluctuates, which is a reasonable amount of money, but it's somewhat trivial for a guy who has well over $200 billion in assets against which he can relatively easily raise collateral or find funding partners. So imagine that Elon then goes and spends another $1.6 billion to get himself back up to 15%. The Twitter board then has to go and enact another poison pill and the other shareholders have to spend another 50% in cash on top of the 50% that they've already put in. So after just two rounds of this, you have to go and spend 125% of your original shareholding in cash with short times to raise that cash just to avoid getting diluted. And then Elon just goes and does the exact same thing again if he chooses to with maybe more like $2 billion. And then Twitter shareholders have to start parting with over 100% of their original shareholding in cash just to keep their position alive. So you can quickly see the problem here. After just two rounds of this game, Elon Musk has spent another three and a half, maybe $4 billion to play the game, about 8%, maybe 10% of what he has already offered to buy the whole company. But the entire rest of the shareholders would at that point have to spend 200% of their original shareholding just to stop the value of their shares dropping. So the odds are stacked firmly against the rest of the shareholders because the numbers quickly go completely bonkers. Now, Elon Musk probably doesn't want to do this because it's not exactly going to make him friends with Twitter shareholders, they won't like him very much for diluting them out and forcing the poison pill onto them because he will be indirectly making them lose money. But he also knows that the Twitter board won't survive to that point because they will be out of the door long before the shareholders have to part with more than 100% of their original shareholding just to stay afloat with their investment. So he knows that although it sounds all funky and everyone got very excited about this poison pill, unfortunately that Twitter poison pill is dead on arrival and the board can't use it effectively without an immediate shareholder revolt and probably significant prison time on top. So here's what Elon will most probably do instead. He's going to go and make a direct tender to the Twitter shareholders. Given the situation that we're in right now, that seems like the most plausible approach. This is a move that is not very common, but within the rules of the game. Elon will go to existing shareholders behind the board's back and just say, here I am. I will buy your Twitter shares off you for a 20% or 30% or whatever premium on your current share price if you want to go and sell them to me. If you do not, you're going to have to go and get diluted by your own board because they're a bunch of spineless pricks. So you can either collect a 20% return immediately from me or lose a big chunk of your value you can get to make the choice. And the speculation out there is that Elon is going to do exactly this in the next week or so. He has even hinted at doing it on Twitter by making repeated plays on the word tender. So unfortunately for the Twitter board, they are massively screwed and this is all their own making. All they're doing is massively ruining their reputations in the process of trying to cover up whatever it is that they don't want Elon Musk to find out about their editorial practices or the ethics policies or whatever else is being hidden. And eventually they're going to lose this battle, however hard they're trying not to. In the meantime, I am here with my popcorn, enjoying watching this from the sidelines. And if you found this video useful, please don't forget to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Remember that if you're based in the UK, you can go and get your $10 bonus for trying out Lightyear, the sponsor of this video, through the link in the description. And thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. And as always, I'll see you guys later.